Good afternoon. Welcome to the parish community of Mary, Mother of God. Today, we would especially like to welcome our new parishioners and all those visiting with us this weekend. Today, we celebrate the 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We begin our celebration in song. Please join in singing the Church's One Foundation. Please rise and join in singing. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May our Lord be with you. See, so you have a statue of St. Anne and the relic on the altar. At the end of Mass, we'll do the closing hymn. I'll leave and come back right out for those of you who wish to stay and begin the novena today. I am told, I know it's only a rumor, that there are people from North Scranton who go over to St. Anne's for the novena instead of being here. I'm just saying, so I have heard. What are you going to do? But whatever. So we'll do the prayers here every day. That's great. Let's all call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to gather all the nations into the peace of your Father's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. You come now in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. You'll come again in glory with salvation for your people at the end of time. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, and God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. And we pray. Show favor, Lord, to your servants. Mercifully increase the gifts of your grace. That made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who mislead and scatter the flock of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, against the shepherds who shepherd my people. You have scattered my sheep and driven them away. You have not cared for them. 
but I will take care to punish your evil deeds. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock from all the lands to which I have driven them and bring them back to their meadow. There they shall increase and multiply. I will appoint shepherds for them who will shepherd them so that they need no longer fear and tremble, and none shall be missing, says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous shoot to David. As king, he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah shall be saved. Israel shall dwell in security. This is the name they give him, the Lord, our justice. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have become near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who made both one and broke down the dividing wall of enmity through his flesh, abolishing the law with its commandments and legal claims, that he might create in himself one new person in place of the two, thus establishing peace, and might reconcile both with God in one body through the cross, putting that enmity to death by it. He came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near, for through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The apostles gathered together with Jesus and reported all they had done and taught. He said to them, come away by yourselves to a deserted place. Rest a while. People were coming and going in great numbers. They had no opportunity even to eat. So they went off in the boat by themselves to a deserted place. People saw them leaving and many came to know about it. They hastened there on foot from all the towns and arrived at the place before them. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved to pity for them. They're like sheep without a shepherd. He began to teach them many things. The Gospel of the Lord. You know, I assume that you know that the readings are the same in Scranton or in Sacramento, California, but they're heard differently depending on where you live and what your experience is. And there's no better example of that than today, okay? It was February, seven times in February, we had to pay to have snow cleared, and it's only 28 days long. Think about that, that's how bad of a, it has, it's one of the worst months I can remember in my long life, okay? And it, it, it was cold, the whole, but we survived, we survived. The pandemic robbed us of a year, really about a year and a half, of normal church going. We have kids who have not entered a school building since like last February. They lost that, but we survived. Okay, you've earned the right to say, we did it, and rejoice a little bit. What does Jesus do with the fellas? They went off to a deserted place and rested a while. Work was going good and, and the iron was hot, but he said, let's take a break. And they took a break. He, he knew there's a time, you gotta slow down a little bit. You've earned it. We've earned it. It's been a bad year for everybody, especially for us who live here in the Northeast, but we survived and we earned a right. You've earned a, a week at the shore. You've earned a, week ba- a night back at the ballpark at Montage Water Parker the coal mine tour, do something and relax, enjoy. And I, I tell you that because they say that people in Northeast of Pennsylvania are most likely not to use their days off. You, you, you just work. Do you realize that all the work that gets done around here is all volunteer? I don't pay a penny for that. People around here just like to work. Our ancestors are coal miners for heaven's sake. The name of the basketball team is be the Scranton Miners. That's what we did. You've been trained to work. Take a day off, take a rest like Jesus did. We struggle with that. It's, it's okay to, you're not slouching off because you take a day off. You're reinvesting in your family. There's a revolutionary idea, spend time with the kids. What a revolutionary idea that is. Spend a little time over at St. Anne's for an afternoon and read the Psalms for a couple hours. What a revolutionary idea. Invest in your soul, your body, for do something to relax. We we struggle with that. That's investing. That's not slacking. That's that's not you, it's called recreation. Look at the word. Recreate. You get recreated. We take a little break in some way. Whatever works for you may be different than me. But take, you're entitled to take a little time to yourself. If I don't recharge the batteries on this wireless, it won't work. And then you begin to realize that, you know, the, the plant, or wherever I work, it will, not, it will not crumble if I take a day off. If I die tomorrow, the bishop will have somebody else here in a couple days. Trust me. You may not like him as much as me, but he'll be here in a week. Trust me. The world does not stop revolving because you die. It's okay to enjoy life a little bit. That's not a sin. It's healthy. It's healthy. And you're not just a cog in a machine. You're a person. You know, day off, drink of water, breath of fresh air. People, human, Jesus knew it. Fellas, let's rest. He's about to feed 10,000. He's going to need his rest. That's next week's gospel. Do yourself a little favor if you have 10 minutes tonight. Get in your cell phone, your computer, and look up the Band of Brothers. 
I think it's the best World War II movie made in mm, 15, 20 years. And the German general, at the end of the movie, just go to the speech by the German general. He's addressing the men. And they have lost. They lost the war. They lost World War II. Think about that. And he says, fellas, it's been a long and a hard war. We've lived together. We've died together. There's a bond between us that only those who have fought in war will ever be able to understand. Some of you have fought war. I never did. And then he says, you've earned the right to go home and have a long life. Even in defeat, he says that. You earned the right to go home and have a life, to enjoy life. Not one person sitting here knows how long they're going to live. I never heard anybody say they spent too much time at work. I never heard Jesus say, you're not entitled to a break, to enjoy life, to have peace. Jesus took a day off. Do we? Let us stand, my friends, and we'll profess our faith in Almighty God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified in the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He'll come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. We put our prayers before the Lord. The response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis and all church leaders, may they find the courage to be good shepherds in leading us to the peace for which we yearn, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, may they have the courage to work together to bring about peace for the whole world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering from natural disasters and from human violence, that they may find comfort and peace in the compassion of others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our law enforcement officers, our military, and all first responders, may God guide them, protect them, and keep them safe, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the containment and eradication of the COVID-19 virus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Christopher and Peter Farrell, for whom this Mass is being offered, that they may live eternally with Christ their Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us end the petitions by praying the vision prayer. Jesus, we are your people. people. We, we praise you as Savior and Lord, Lord. deep in our, our commitment to you, you, your Church, and each other. other. Let us all so share, share more actively in spreading, spreading the good news of God, God present among us. us. Help us reach out to those who have not yet experienced the joy of participating in parish life. Inspire us to seek justice and peace for all members of our parish family and beyond. Assist us in living your gospel of compassion and love in service to those in need. Mindful of our many blessings, we are especially grateful for your gift of our parish family, family dedicated to Mary, Mother of God, your spouse Joseph, and our beloved saints. Anthony, Vincent, Stanislaus, and Stephen. Lord, send us your spirit. Make us alive as we have never been. Let us celebrate together and place our hope in you. Amen.
Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord is your sacrifice at your hands. For the praise of glory's name, for our good and good of all this holy church. God, who in this one perfect sacrifice brought to completion the very offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants. Make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel so that what each of us has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and ever beware to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, Jesus humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. By his rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels, archangels, thrones, dominions, and all the powers of heaven, we sing a hymn of your praise. Therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. Giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. Similar way, when supper ended, he took a chalice. Once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. You remain with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At 
the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace to the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We share a sign of Christ's peace. away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy. You should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. During communion, please join in singing the cry of the poor.
Just a couple announcements. Again, we'll have the closing hymn. And I think you're singing pretty well with these music sheets we have in the pews. The books will be back come November, but that's a little ways away. But you only have one piece to work on, so it's not too hard. Always remember your envelopes in the collection baskets at the exits. We'll probably begin using the baskets soon, but not yet. As the bishop importantly announced this week on August 15th, which happens to fall on a Sunday this year, mass attendance will again be obligatory. Now, that's common sense applied. If you're sick, certainly if you have any issues with the COVID, you know, if you have it, you stay home. That's always the case. If you're sick in the winter, don't get everybody else in church or work sick. Stay home and deal with your sickness. But otherwise, the bishop hopes that you can attend Mass. We have the Cornhole Tournament two weeks tonight. That's for younger people, but anybody can play. It's simple, and the money goes to St. Joe's Center to benefit the kids over there in conjunction with all their activities, Go Joe, the ride, and all that stuff. So a lot of stuff going on this month. It's a good time. Let us all stand to pray. Graciously be present to your people, Lord. Lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. Mighty God bless us and all of our families, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our liturgy ends, we go in peace, glorifying God with our lives. Thanks be to God.